A little while ago, I made a video titled Six Unsolved Mysteries in Genshin Impact, and you guys seem to really enjoy it. Well, we're back again today with five more unsolved mysteries in Genshin Impact. This game really does have some crazy lore, and we will be tackling five more of these games' crazy rabbit hole questions. But even then, this game just has so much mystery and lore to it. We got alchemy, Ars Goetia, the gods, the archons, Celestia. Heck, even at some point, I actually want to get more into Mona and the Hexen Circles. But before we get into all of those mysteries, I've got something special I've got to show you. Before we get into this video though, I want to spotlight another one of my favorite games, today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Folks, it's free, it's fun, and it's downright the greatest mobile game of all time. I mean, over 600 different champions spread across several unique factions in the game, all of which have their own place in the lore and history of Teleria. I know I've already piqued your interest, so head down into the description and use my links to download Raid on your mobile device or PC right now. So, they've got this absolutely cool new boss called the Hydra, a six-headed beast that offers six unique boss battles. We're talking a head that causes poison called the Head of Blight, another that steals your buffs called the Head of Mischief, a few more known as the Head of Torment, the Head of Wrath, and the Head of Decay. Torment goes about applying true fear to your champions, Wrath weakens your team the more you attack it until you've caused its vengeance buff to kick in, and Decay will completely heal the other heads if you can't stop it from doing so, all while threatening to completely heal the other heads. Oh, and let's not forget about the main tank head of the Hydra called the Head of Suffering, that brings upon a new debuff called Pain Link, which causes damage anytime your champions even attack this head. That thing is just wild, and I've gotta say, taking on this boss fight is definitely one of my favorite things to do in Raid right now. Oh, and guys, if you haven't been sold by the great new Hydra boss battle, how about a super limited edition champion available to everyone playing the game? Between now and January 28th, 2022, play as esports legend and Navi superstar, Simple. Simple's limited edition champ is available for free to both new and old players in Raid. All you have to do is log in for 7 days between now and January 28th, and he's yours. Don't miss out on this, because when he's gone, he's gone forever. There's seriously never been a better time to get started. Hit the link in the description, or scan my QR code, and you'll get an epic champion Ina, 200k silver, 1 energy refill, and 1 experience boost, and 1 ancient shard so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in-game. All this treasure will be waiting for you here in your inbox. And when you're set up, look for me at Tevachinary in-game, and maybe even try to join my clan Tevachinary if you're quick enough. So just check the links in the description to jump in the game, and I'll see you in there. So, starting off the first mystery is Gold and the Synthetic Human Project. In the most recent story quest, Shadows Amid Snowstorms, we found out some lore-breaking info in regards to Gold her identity, and her synthetic humans she's created. We find out Gold the Alchemist is actually Rhyndaughter, Gold's mother, and that she has created more synthetic human prototypes. But Albedo is considered as the best one, and Ryan has also left him with the mission of solving the mysteries of the world. In my previous video in regards to Albedo, I came to a very interesting conclusion about why Gold created these synthetic humans in the first place. Without spoiling the video, I will just leave it in the description below. However, I will end off this entry with this interesting quote from Albedo. As beings who set foot in this world, how arrogant are we in desiring to control our destiny and in desiring to create? Is creation an arrogant act, Traveler? If not, why do we call the ones that created us and control us gods? If it is, then what qualifies us to call ourselves creators? How far must we take our reverence and respect, and what purpose does it serve? I'll leave that right here, but let's discuss it down in the comments. Up next is a huge fan favorite, and personally, one of the biggest head scratchers in my book, Dainsleaf. Dane is a whole mystery in himself, being the Bowkeeper, which is essentially a guardian over the Ermensol trees. He is also labeled as the Twilight Sword, one of the royal guards of Conria. Dane knows the main character Traveler's sibling, and they have figured out the knowledge of the world. 
Whale Stat has an awesome video in regards to Dainsleif holding an eighth element, which is essentially the power of space and time. I will leave his video down below so you guys can go check it out. Dainsleif states himself during the Tevat chapter previews on the Conria section, In the perpetual meantime of a sheltered eternity, most are content to live and not to dream. But in the hidden corners where the gods' gaze does not fall, there are those who dream of dreaming. Some say a few are chosen and the rest are dregs. But I say we humans have our humanity. We will defy this world with a power from beyond. Now, you who has set foot in this world, Maybe gold and the way how Dane restrains the Abyss Herald, the way how he runs in after the Traveler's sibling, and the way how the MC sibling describes to the main character, we have always had enough time, really just makes me think the God of Time may have helped the inhabitants of Conria develop this power. The people of Conria dream of dreaming, while others are content of living in the current world, oblivious of what's actually going on. Conrians questioned the logic of how the world is, and this just seems like a giant simulation, and only a few people have realized this. Some examples being the Traveler's sibling, and even perhaps Dane. Maybe the synthetic humans were meant to be used as an army to fight back against the Divine, in hopes to have multiple beings harness this power as I mentioned earlier. I really want to tackle Dane more in the future, as I have some wild claims about him. This is honestly one of the topics I want to discuss the most. Let's get some comments about this going. This topic is something I don't really see being covered a lot, and that is the Hexen Zirkel Witches. The Hexen Zirkel are a circle of witches that conduct ermine soul explorations and gather around for formal tea parties. Lisa states this about Mona and her voiceover for her. Lisa is also not associated with this circle despite being the Witch of the Purple Rose, and she also denies her interest in it. There is also no proof that La Senora, the Crimson Witch of Flames, is involved in it either. Mona aspires to be just like her master, who is a master astrologer and hydromancer. Alice is also apparently Mona's master's rival, and is highly likely to also be in association with the Hexen Circle. What's really interesting is this group's fascination with Ermensol trees. Ermensol trees, as we know, contain knowledge of the land of Teyvat. And from what we see about astrology in Genshin, it has the power to uncover a lot of secrets. From what we've seen, Mona demonstrates using the power of astrology. She is able to tell if a person is lying, can sense their intentions from a single glance, and is able to view a person's traits just from knowing what their constellation is. Bottom line, having this skill must have taken a lot of studying to learn. The Hexen Circle crave knowledge in every aspect, and going on Ermensel expeditions definitely has to have something to do with this. The Ley Lines hold the knowledge, and to expand their repertoire, the Hexen Circle hold expeditions. To be honest, maybe that's where Alice and Mona's master could be right now. I want to take a further dive into this category at some point, because I barely see anyone talking about these witches. The penultimate mystery today is something I mentioned in my last video, and in my Celestia secret video, and that is the civilization of Salvin Dagnir. Salvin Dagnir was an ancient tribe that once lived on the lush mountain of Dragonspine. For a while, this tribe and civilization flourished enjoying the blessings of Celestia. This kingdom had a large white tree, and the priestess of Vindagnir gave birth to the princess beneath that tree. She was granted the blessings and was also given the ability to see the future. She had a dream that one day a black dragon was filling the land with a scarlet poison and therefore took it as a bad omen. Years after the birth of this princess, however, the heavens dropped the Skyfrost Nail on this once prosperous lush nation, thus causing a vast blizzard covering this place to turn into the dragon spine we see today. In one of the more recent updates, we make our way over to the mysterious island known as Sorumi, where we meet a tribe of ancient people who are in a sense in the same predicament as Salvin Dagnir. 
Their nation was destroyed by the Thunderbird, as her best friend, Lu, was used as a sacrifice for her, causing her massive rage and destroying all of the people. Underneath this island, though, are murals depicting the Skyfrost nail being dropped on Dragonspine. There are also other markings and such around that illustrate a lush green mountain. In Dragonspine itself, there are a few murals pointing to a higher being, giving these individuals with crowns on their head a blessing of some sort. They also show what Salvin Dagnir used to look like before the Skyfrost nail was dropped. And in the third one, it shows Celestia dropping the nail down. There are reasons why these murals are here, and it seems these people wanted to pass a message to anyone that finds these places as a way to pass on knowledge of what the old world used to be like. It seems their goal was to pass down knowledge so that this information would never get lost. The same can also be said about the way how ermine soul trees pass down knowledge too. There's a reason as to why we get artifacts from the ermine soul trees. It's to pass down the knowledge of the past. The goal is for us to find out this knowledge and to see through Celestia's facade. Alchemy plays a part in this too, and I honestly believe these domains are alchemy labs. Resin activates these trees and we learn of the past. I can go on about this for hours, but for now, I'm going to leave it at this. Lastly, I want to cover what people probably consider one of the biggest mysteries of all in the universe of Genshin, and that's our favorite floating pet or emergency food, Paimon. Have you guys ever wondered why she acts like a child? It's like she's seen the world before and has some knowledge, but she is also very naive, childish, and oblivious at the same time. There are tons of theories and speculations going around as to what Paimon could actually be. As I've mentioned in a few of my past videos, Ashikai has a theory in regards to Paimon being a Starkeeper. I will leave her video down below. There's also the idea of her being the god of time, and how there are ruins dedicated to the god of time in Mondstadt. Having the power of time is a busted thing to have, especially in the land of Teyvat. This power is unbelievable. I believe that the people of Conria actually learned to harness this power of time and space, and Paimon could perhaps be the entity that helped them do this. The MC sibling mentions something in regards to always having enough time, and Dane's powers are very reminiscent of powers like that. I can also say, whenever we pause the menu, it's like time stops, and we have the power to move time using the clock. So this indicates Paimon could have these insane powers, and how she got into the state she was in was that she provided Conria with powers like this or they learned how to use these powers through some other method. This is merely speculation though, but what really got me was how she was depicted by Albedo during Act 2 of Shadows Amid Snowstorms. If we take a look at how she is painted and the expression she has on her face, it almost seems like Albedo is painting her in a completely different light than what we see her as now. She looks a lot more distinguished in this piece of art, and it makes it seem like Albedo knew her at some point in his life. I know Albedo doesn't have any memories of Conria, but remember that Albedo does possess everything Gold knows, and perhaps even has some of her memories. Paimon in this image also has that Mona Lisa effect on her that I can't really explain, but I can just tell that there has to be some kind of strong connection here. One more thing too is her attire and how it's similar to Dane's. With these aspects though, I don't think this is something we should overlook, and I think it's something we as players should observe very carefully. Well, that wraps up five more unsolved mysteries in Genshin Impact. Honestly, the next video I want to dive into are the Hexen Zirkle Witches. The Hexen Zirkle Witches, the Ermin Soul Trees, past knowledge of this world, these trees and individuals who depicted these murals are trying to teach us about the past. It just further insinuates that this world of Teyvat is a facade and Celestia is deceiving everyone. But you tell me though, what are your thoughts on all these mysteries? Let me know down in the comments below. I love the lore in this game, and I can't wait to keep playing detective. Until next time though, I think I'm gonna wrap this up. Thanks for opening the Tevotionary, and with that said, I will see you in the future for more Genshin Impact content and lore.